Hey everybody, I thought we'd start with the lesson of the foot and one thing that happens a lot with sculpture and drawing is you get really good at the torso. Here's one of my um, torsos. Actually it's a fragment of a full figure of Venus. Um, not sure how well it's showing up here. Anyway, um, you know, the torso is important. It's sort of the, the um, maybe the soul of the person. And I think there's a tendency to start with the torso, then grow our way out to the limbs. So a lot of times we never really get to the hands and feet. Um, but today I'm going to try to fight that and start with the feet. Hope you enjoy it. Okay guys, I'm going to make a little foot here. I just thought it would be faster and easier to see the hole if it's small. Um, everybody always asks about clay materials and it's probably something I don't talk about enough. I don't think about it enough. Um, my teachers were never technicians about their materials. They always just talked about the principles of painting and sculpting and drawing. So maybe that was sort of a, a weakness of theirs. Um, the materials would get overlooked. This is, if I remember correctly, this is a mix of the Van Aken clay. Um, if you guys remember that brand. I don't think they make it anymore. And it's probably that mixed with some Roma clay. And I made it softer by adding olive oil to it. And I don't really recommend olive oil. It's just what I had to use at the time. I know a lot of artists use mineral oil or Vaseline. And that seems to be more um, sort of archival or, you know, stationary over time. Being a petroleum product instead of a plant-based product. But anyway... That's what this is. So this is oil-based clay. It's pl plastilina, as they call it. And I'm not using a reference right now. Maybe I should grab a foot to use. Um, but maybe what I can do is get this started in a generic way first, and then we can get into some of the anatomical landmarks. Um, there's a concept with the foot you know, with, with, with everything in the body, you need concepts. You need ways of thinking. You need geometric sort of visualizations to simplify anatomy, because anatomy is very complex, and um, that's part of what makes it beautiful, but also what makes it beautiful are the simple proportions and the geometry of the parts. So, and there's an old expression that that um, art is variety in unity. Variety in unity. That always stuck with me. Um, and it's hard to have both. You know, a lot of people have one, but not the other. So, you know, very few artists can put it all together. I'm not saying that I do. I'm just saying that's that's what I strive for, and that's that's um, something that keeps me humble. You know, when you look at the old masters, it's very clear that not only were they good with the details, but from a distance, their stuff really really sings. If that makes sense. It really has a lot of impact from a distance. So my first geometric concept here is the cone. And I think cones are, are awesome three-dimensional forms to use because a cone tapers. And there's, you know, you can think about the whole foot being a cone. It has a base that's very wide and then it's coming to an apex up to the ankle. You could think about the lower leg as another cone coming down into the foot. So you almost have two cones coming together. Um, so things in nature 
taper. And if we look at this from the front or the back, trying to get my camera situated here, um, you can see that the whole foot is going to triangulate in the footprint from the back to the front, getting wider. Okay. So the foot is narrower in the back, wider in the front. Um, it's going to have its widest point across the knuckles of the, of the toes. Um, I guess that's where the metatarsals meet the tarsals, I think. I'll double check that, and if I'm wrong, I'll put a correction. It's a good thing about teaching, it makes you learn stuff. So from that widest point forward, um, you know, my teacher Steve Perkins always said that cultures that wear shoes, the, the toes start to come together past that knuckles wide point. Um, also notice that the wide point is not straight across, it's at a little bit of an angle that way. So it's angling with the angles of the toes. Um, so you have a triangulation from the heel out to those, that wide point of the knuckles. <clears throat> and then, again, if, if it's a westernized foot, and most feet are now, you know, bound up in shoes. And I, I guess his point was, if, if you don't wear shoes, if you're a culture that, you know, you're hunter and gatherer and you don't wear shoes, the feet will tend to um, splay out more. And they almost develop these huge pads, you know, that, that the person walks around on. So that, that was his only point with that. You don't have to overthink it, just, just sort of a formal analysis. Okay, so we have it getting wider and then narrower again. So it's a it's a triangle, but it's in, it's more specifically it's a um, kind of a hexagon shape or a diamond. Um, I always kind of think of it as a coffin shape. You know, I think we see these shapes repeat and repeat and repeat, and if that's kind of the whole shape of the the body it could also be the shape of the footprint. Um, so that's the cone. And next, I want to introduce um, a big plane change. There's all kinds of ways to break it down, but one that I notice a lot is if you if you kind of follow the high point going this way. This will lead you to the space between the, the big toe and the rest of the toes. <clears throat> okay, so this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is an attempt to split the foot into two planes, sort of like a tent. You know, like in a cartoon, you see, see those little simple camping tents where it's one plane this way, one plane that way. Now, on this tent, the inside plane is much shorter, where the arch is. And then the outside plane is much broader. Whoops. And <clears throat> kind of roundier, you know, it's curvy. So that's one way to break it down. Pretty simple way. Um, a more advanced way to break it down beyond the, the triangle, triangulation, the tent, the cone, is you can also start to break it into what my teacher called the mound versus the platform. 
So remember, Steve Perkins always, ta always taught us this, that above the arch of the foot, remember, the foot has an arch underneath. So the area above the arch is going to be like a dome. And in his case, he called it a mound. And the mound concept always stuck with me. So that's the convex mound. And then if you think about a flip-flop, you know, a thong sandal, the, the strap of the flip-flop Um, everything behind that is the mound. Okay, so everything north or back of the strap. <clears throat> That's the mound. Everything in front of that is the platform. So this platform, it's like the knuckles and the toes and then around this edge here, you're going to get a continuation of this platform all the way back into that groove in front of the Achilles tendon. So there's sort of a rhythm here. Gosh, this thing won't stay down. There's sort of a, a pattern there. So the mound, I'll just write M for mound, and then this is P for platform. So the platform, um, you have to get this little extra tail part of it that goes all the way back. And that Achilles, it's like you can grab it, you know, just think of the story of Achilles from your mythology. I can never follow mythology very well. I always seem kind of crazy, but, but that story of Achilles, I remember that. You know, she held, she held her son by his Achilles heel when she put him in the, the river. And it made, I think as I recall, it made his, his whole body, um, you know, resilient. <laughs> unharmable, except for that one little spot where she was holding him. So that's where the phrase, you know, your Achilles heel comes from, meaning your one weakness. So anyway, those little things stick with you. <clears throat> okay, so we got the cone, the tent, and now the mound and the platform. Here's that mound. You know, it's kind of find joy in making these forms. Of course, if someone has a higher arch, they're going to have a more prominent mound. Then there'll be a little angle change from I don't know what the bones are. Is that the, the tarsals and the metatarsals? There's a little step change here. I'll double check on the names here. But you can look for that, that high point right in there. And I remember Steve always said, if you tie your shoelaces too tight, you feel it on that high point. So, I think it's good at first to make make the foot as if it's a shoe. I'm sorry. You make make the foot like it's like a stocking. Okay? Make 
You want it to look like a foot without the details first. So it's almost like, you know, if you pull out that space between the big toe and the rest of the toes, you get the mound and the platform, you get the big angles of the foot, that coffin shape. Um, it should start to look like a foot. And then the rest of the details are going to just fit in to that foundation that you've created. So I think what I'll do is I'll get a reference for the details and I'll do this and I'll do another clip. Okay, that's the basic setup.